structures, it seems like a, there's a lot of emphasis, a lot of focus point on space or death and like the um, absence of spaces mm-hmm. at some point. What really got you interested in depth and space like that? Mm-hmm. It's very interesting when you think about structures like that. What mm-hmm. really got you like thinking mm-hmm. that way? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that's a really good question. I think like I think I'm interested in really radical shifts in scale, because I think that you know I think um, I think it's I had a really good te- I, I've had a series of really good teachers. I was one of your questions was you know if you want to be an artist, what you should do. I think you know it's so important to have really good teachers. You know you can be a great drawer like you know and I'm, I'm a teacher myself and. You know, you can have all these amazing students, but if you're making a connection with a great teacher, that that's so important, I think. So um, I, you know, I had a very, a really great teacher. I think like I've had a series of them. One of them, he said, he said, you know, he talked about. Um, he said, I remember I was like in second grade. It was, you know, he was like <laughs> way. He was really shooting high over our heads. He said something like, "Why, um, you know, the, the the impetus to make art would is some is around." is a reflection of your experience in the world. What's your exp- what is your experience in the world? And my experience in the world is like, I can look at that cloud, and I can look at your eyelash, and I can look at that cloud, and I can look at your eyelash. That's an amazing thing, that I can shift from that all the way out to there in my seeing. And so to me, that was always really interesting. And the shifts in scale and in, and in, and in um, space that your eye can do is an incredible thing. So I'm interested in drawing attention to that. So you're absolutely right. So like one of the things I like to do is like take if you come into a room, you see a string, and it goes like you know, 50 yards, and attaches you to that corner. And in many ways, I think it's a, it's a, it's I'm interested in this idea of how we locate ourselves in space, how we orient ourselves when there's so much information here. How do we orient our, our bodies in space? And so and a lot of the times when you go to one of my sculptures, it's it's some way it's it's reminding you. It's trying to remind you about how phenomenal, how amazing it is that you you can stand in a room and perceive space around you. We use like very common objects like pine straws or like paper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like why do you choose to do that mm-hmm. instead of like paint or anything? So I start, you know, I started I'd probably drawing. Then I went to painting. Then I probably went to architecture, and from there I went to sculpture. And when I went to sculpture, I was really interested in just a basic idea of you know why you know what makes this uh, what what makes this object have value at all at all you know it's designed it's produced it's mass produced it, 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 and you know it can hold water we can see the water it can be washed it, you know so just to ask questions about how value is a how, you know how do we value objects whether it's you who value you know how do you value objects and how does like an american value object how does you know, an ancient Egyptian value an object. Like, how do we place value on objects, and how do they last? You know, why is that shirt your shirt when we know that there's hundreds of other people who own that shirt, but you think it's yours? Like, how do you know? You know, how does how does something become important? You know, this it's a kind of, is a question that people ask in graduate schools and studios. They say, you know, if you're if the studio is going to burn down, like, what would you take? You know, and for all of us, like, what would be the one thing we would keep, and why? Why is there value in that object for you? Probably a lot of it has to do. It might be monetary, but it could. It's a lot of it has to do with emotional value, with memory, um, the significance that way. But it's much. That's much harder to put your finger on. So I'm actually interested in taking something that is very generic, like a Q-tip, and and when you see it in the sculpture. If it, it actually having both an identity that's totally generic and very valueless, and when I say valueless, I mean it's cheap, it's reproducible, it's mass produced. You could, you know, you could go to we could all find one in an hour, right? So it's 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 accessible. So I'm interested in having that Q-tip suddenly, surprisingly, feel valuable in a way that you didn't ever see it before, and then having this this you were talking about these you know, uh, shifts in, in perspective and scale. And having it be very beautiful and then nothing at all, and then very beautiful and nothing at all, and that kind of s- this this idea of sort of sitting between that all the time, so that it's not static. That because when I think that's our experience of, of of seeing and of life is that you're it's very it's 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 
it's very dynamic, right? It's like I'm looking at you and there's things flickering, there's people moving, there's, you know, it's not a static experience. So, um, so again, with meaning or an object, I want it to be just a Q-tip, but also to, you know, feel like a mountain covered in snow. Or you know, th but let but let the viewer make that jump, not tell them. To set up, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in setting up locations that where you experience things in the moment. When you were like us, like teenagers, and you went to high school, like how did you, like what did you do as an artist in high school? As a high, as a yeah. student. Yeah. Like, um, so when I was in high school, I was like the, I did the cartoons for the newspaper, I drew all the time, I did everything that I could. You know, I was drawing, if you open up a notebook from, from high school, it's covered with drawings. I used to draw um, on, the, on the subway, I used to draw people. I know there's some people who wanted to draw. I used to draw people on the subway and then collect those drawings. And when I applied to college, my college essay, I wrote about that experience of drawing on the subways and had like picture, had, had some of the drawings on uh, um, uh, uh, from that. Subway, you always run into that bump right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's crazy, but it makes your hand really steady. Artistic license though, a little. Did you have any other hobbies besides just drawing? I did a lot of sports. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I like, you know, I like, I, you know, as I get older, probably it'll happen less, but I do like sculptures where you feel like there's actual, um, you know, that there's a huge effort involved in them. You know, this idea that you feel like, how long did that take? How did they get up there? You know, is that is I think ha is part of having done a lot of sports is that this idea of like something being uh, an effort. And um, there was the questions about like how long does it t how long does it take to make work? I like the idea of um, artwork. In some ways, it's a funny idea, but I like the idea that if you gave me $10, 10 minutes, and five objects, I would make you a sculpture. So it starts with those limits. Where, you know, so, but if you gave me that building that, you know, and a year, then you get a sculpture. But so, that, so the parameters are kind of, so it has a kind of, in my mind, it has a kind of marathon idea that sort of like, you know, it, it's a, it, you, you have, it starts with like five ingredients and the sculpture then is, the, you know, it necessitates a kind of sculpture. So I think that, and I think that comes from doing sports. How do you feel your experience with like as a female artist is different from like male artists? So I think that I think that if I were a female artist ten years ago, it would be radical. I think that there's a generation of women um, in the in sort of from probably in the last century, I would say, who broke down massive barriers for my generation. Um, that 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 it, there was a, there were a lot of sacrifices made and it was a lot harder and I think that I have benefited greatly from a lot of very brave uh, you know I think moves by women in the arts in, at least in this country in the last century I think that there's certainly you know I think that if my if you attach a, a you know a man's name to my work and you look at it people look at it will look at it differently I would too it's just it, we are all you know we have that. Um, and I think that there are times where I'm treated in certain ways because I'm a woman. Whether it's actually hurt me, I, I don't know, because I think there are also ways that, you know, I, it may have helped me. You know, you never know. But I do think that if even five years, if I were five years older, um, I'm 44, I was born in 69, and I think that if you go back even five years before that, it was tough. You know, you can look at like important group shows like five years before me, and I mean, it's actually it's true. I mean, this is a very like, it's a very sort of flat way to judge this. But if you look at important group shows that are supposed to be open, you know, if you look about those shows even five years before me, it could, the percentage of women would be like twenty percent at most. Whereas now it's sh it's generally should be it probably isn't, mm -hmm. but it's closer to it's closer to fifty. But I think art is so subjective. You know, art is. It, it, there's an, it, the idea of what's good and what's bad is so volatile. You, it's 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 so much of it is judgment that things like, like gender and race, are very hard to know. They, they you know they it's not like, it's not like being um, you know a mathematician where or where you can actually, you know, or an athlete where they're just you know either you ran fast or you didn't. There's a lot of cultural judgment around what makes an artwork good or not. So all of the cultural biases 
are going to be out there floating around yeah. in a way that you can't control in a lot of professions. You know, like my father is Chinese, and when he came to the States, his parents said, you can't be an artist because you will, there will be so much bias against you. You need to have, you need to have a degree, which is a kind of a, a very traditional um, immigrant way to fight bigotry in this country is that you get a degree. If you're a doctor, you're a doctor. It doesn't matter what your gender is or what your color is. So that, that kind of way of uh, that, you know, deciding when, when you're an artist, you know, if you're an artist, you're an African-American artist, you, people will look at it there, you're an African-American artist. If you're a doctor, you can fight that more, whatever bias might be set against you, because you have that piece of paper that says, I have a skill, right? How often is technology used to make its structures? Mm -hmm. Like, how important is it? Good question. So um, I do, I do sh work that's interior, work that's like not permanent. I do some that's permanent here, but I have a bot, like a whole series of works that are that are permanent works and use and that can be outside. And if you're doing permanent works outside, then you're dealing with engineers, you're dealing with permits, you're dealing with lawyers, you're dealing with um, just being able to have the work over, you know, exist over a long period of time. So, like I'm doing the 96th Street subway, the art for that. And so that's like, you know, that means we do tons of CAD drawings for it, you know, because we have to have the, with, with a project like that, you ha I have to produce a lot of it outside the studio, right? So you do do, a, you do, you work a lot on the computer for that. And whether, you know, we'd start in SketchUp, go to CAD, Photoshop. 50 years from now, when people are learning about you and like art books and everything, what do you want? What is one thing that you want them to get from mm. your structures? What mm. is one thing you want them to put down? Like, this is what I was trying to do. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. Um, that's a good question. I mean, because I think that's the way you have to think. You have to think, okay, like, you know, I'm trying to do something that will have, you know, will have, a, will be part of a larger conversation. You know, I think that, um, I think that we were talking a little about it, how, you know, the experience of, our experience of contemporary life. I think that I, I would imagine that if the, if the work lasts, you know, past, let's say, my own life, that it might be about um, how the speed of information that we have, and that we live with in, right now, that, 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 that's sped up so much in our own time, um, and the complexity that we deal with on a very daily basis, and how we and how we compute that complexity, how we make sense of our lives, given that we have this onslaught of information in a way that I think a hundred years ago was also they were th they've been thinking people have been thinking about this how that's sped up, uh, you know every century it has sped up you know how you know each space and time change when when you know if you want if you want information happening in Moscow right now you can get that information in a second right so the time and space change and it's sped up at a, an incredible rate I think boundaries have um, have broken down because of that I think you know this idea of a center and of um, information having a hierarchy has changed that we that we, it's, we see it as much more relative in general so I think that the work has a relationship to those ideas. But ultimately, I hope that, that, that when you see the artwork, it makes you think, it makes you feel, it makes you question. People talk about you, and they sit here and put your name <laughs> in <laughs> conversations with uh, other great artists. They probably would, oh, Sarah Z, she's like a <laughs> genius. What, do you, what is your feedback to that? You know, because your artwork is amazing. That, thank you, I like, that's oh, nice to hear. <laughs> <laughs> is that a question or statement? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was a question, was a question followed by a statement. That was a question. I mean, you know, I think it's I, you know, it's all relative. You've probably asked someone else, and they'd say, "I hate her work," you know. So it's you no, know, it's important that I think that you know, artwork should be a conversation. I'm not running for president, right? You can't. It can't be about approval. It has to be about asking questions. It has to be about the about ideas, right? And ideas are not always about it's great. You know, so I think that, you know, if you look at the history of any artist, there's going to be, you know, harsh criticism. There's going to be years where they were not appreciated that, you know, when I was in graduate school, I had a, a, a teacher named Jackie Windsor, who's a sculptor, um, a 
and uh, from a generation above me. And she said, you know what, you are all great artists. You wouldn't be here if you're not. This is graduate school. She said, you're all talented. That, no, I don't care that you're talented. Like, there are a lot of talented people. She said, the reason you're going to be an artist in like two years after this program is if you're resilient. Because you're going to go, you're, you're going to go, your work's going to be good, it's going to be bad, it's going to be good, it's gonna, people are going to hate it, they're going to love it, you're going to love your own work. We, we all, you guys all love to draw. How often are you like, this drawing stinks, <laughs> right? A lot, a lot, right? So you have to be able to not, you know, I used to teach high school art, and it, the hardest thing to do is to get people to put their drawings up nicely and not and be proud of them because it's, it's hard because you know a lot of the time they don't come out the way you want them to it's frustrating right and it's not going to be you get you don't get better and better and better right you get like this and every time it gets good the next drawing is not better it's not it's not that kind of process so i think that you have to be really careful about not getting too excited about the outside affirmation, even though it's great and we all want it, but you have to know that that affirmation is, is, can come and go. And I think you have to figure out a few people who, are, who you think really understand your artwork and you can talk about your artwork and you can appreciate your artwork and listen to those people. See how, I mean, I think that's true of most anything you do. You wanna have like a few critics that you really value and that you can rely on to tell you the truth and help you out and support you. And that's why I think a really good teacher is always really important.